Jose. The man, the myth, the legend. He's had many tactics through the years, but this year at Roma, he's changed things up yet again. And today we look at his Roma tactic of three at the back. So what you see is a 4-2-3-1, a tactic that Jose used quite a lot throughout his career and even in the first season with Roma and he progressed to this new version halfway through last season and he stuck with it. What's changed? Well, he instantly has three centre-backs in the middle there, two wing-backs who provide all the width pushing on, then he's got the two holding midfielders in front. Now, instead of a traditional kind of three-at-the-back setup where you're going to have two up front, maybe with one in behind, what he does is he has his striker, the main focal point, and he has two in behind supporting him. It's a lovely looking system and this is one I loved playing. By the way, if you want to mess around with systems like this, go to buildlineup.com and you can use this as well. Just create some formations that you can maybe use in FM. Okay, this wasn't just a case of simply selecting said formation, going to it and then building it via the classic that everyone seems to think of Jose is dropping down, low block. That's not the case with Jose. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. He's actually more aggressive and he's more pragmatic once he gets the lead. If you think of the Real Madrid teams, they were super high pressing and top scorers in their league. With Roma, it's a similar story. These two guys are going to push up, as are these. It's more, if anything, of a mid block with the line sometimes popping up even higher to make it more compact. Some things will be set on stone though, like these two roles here are going to be the main outlets for our creativity. Think of Dybala and Pellegrini going to be sitting in there. And these two roles in here as a double pivot, Cristiante and possibly Camara, Wijnaldum, Matic, that sort of combination. And without doubt, the width is going to come from both wingbacks. What we're going to be looking for when the league table finishes up is a good defensive record, but goals as well. It's not just going to be built on a really solid defence. We need goals coming from this team as well. Right, with that being said, I went to work and I tried it first season. The shape was there, played around with the rolls, really happy. I mean, look at this start. I kind of got settled into our groove after this Torino game, which I'm still angry about, but look at the following after that. There wasn't goals going in at all. In fact, all the way down here, one goal conceded in 12 or 13 matches. Then we battered Matt Lazio before the break. Back from the break, things started to chug along a little bit like they so often do in FM and things weren't quite right. We were dropping points against teams we shouldn't have and the end of the season fell away quite a lot. In fact, the end of the season was blooming awful. In big trouble and I don't want to be in big trouble. Great runs in the Europa League runners-up, Italian Cup to Napoli and we missed out on the Champions League just. So the league campaign, it was okay. We conceded 29 goals, which was about the third or fourth best in the league, but we didn't score enough with 56 and we lost too many matches and finished fifth. I wasn't too happy with it, as I said on Twitter. There you see it on Twitter. I like to keep people informed when I'm trying to do these new tactic builds and I did it step by step, but season over the Jose tactic was also close to mirroring life, which there were. They've been up and down the league, but they currently sit fourth or fifth, I think, but I wasn't happy with it from an FN standpoint, meaning I want to have more enjoyment out of it and get a few more goals leading to a better overall result and performance. Mostly key from that second paragraph there, played the same way throughout the season so I didn't adapt and against teams that we were dominating I still stuck in that mid to low block when we probably should have been a bit more aggressive. So you know what, I wasn't happy with it. So we started again and we go again and we made some tweaks and look at the way it started, especially against those teams that we're supposed to dominate against that's not a bad start, is it? 9-0, 5-0, 3-0, 5-0. All right then, all right then. In fact, the season had a much better look to it and I loved the way we played. We finished third, which I think for a Roma team is pretty good considering we're copying Mourinho principles. We won 24 out of 38 games, only losing six. Top scorers in the league, which I wanted from an FM standpoint rather than a real life standpoint with 94 goals and 26 conceded, which was the second best in the league, second only to Inter Milan. For a goal difference of 68, that is something Jose would absolutely love. And again, we started the season like a house on fire, but this time we were really beating teams that we should be, but beating them really well. You can see there the 9-0 against Cremonese, Udinese, Lecce, all in for it, including Sampdoria. 
a 0-0 away draw against Inter, which is arguably more impressive, and we just kept it going. First defeat came to Atalanta, and that defeat didn't come till October, so really good first half of the season. Into the second half of the season, after that winter break, and no matter what I do, guys, I don't know about you, but I always struggle after that World Cup break. You can see there, we lost three out of five, something like that. But then we started to get it back. We got it back really well, and the close of the season was super impressive. Probably a few too many draws, which Jose can do as well. But we closed it out with a 6-2 away to Fiorentina. And Napoli at home, 4-0. You'll take that all day. Okay, dudes, I've kept you long enough with my thinking and where I've got to and how I got to this final tactic. Now let me take you through it. There's three versions that I've used and I've tweaked right the way through the season. This ain't no plug and play. So here we are. This is the first tactic we used. This is the one we used in season one as well. There were some role changes, but in essence, this is the one we used. The three centre-backs there set, not wide. If you look at the play instructions, which we'll get onto, they do say stay wider, but wide centre-backs for me just stayed too wide, left us a bit too open down the middle. Wing-back attack was cars drop on one side. We've got Grimaldo here who I had to bring in because of an injury. He played down there over the night. It was either Spinozola or Zalewski. Now, in central midfield, we've got a defensive midfielder. Next to him, we've got a Volante. Season one, he was a Regista, but Cristiante is more... I guess suited to be a volante works perfectly he's got a couple of player instructions in there not too much shoot more often because if you look at cristiante by the way he's only going to got long shots of 16 so you should really use that to your abilities just in front of them you've got pellegrini the ballot abraham that's the triangle we wanted season one abraham was a pressing forward much more suited to be a target forward especially linking up with these two the ballot season one frequentista shadow striker in season two worked a lot better Take you over to the team instructions. You can see cautious mentality. Remember, this is away from home in the tougher matches, and it's probably why it didn't work in season one because I still approached games against the likes of Cremonese this way. When in reality, in real life, they would push on a lot more. You can see that in possession, we're playing out of defense, working the ball in the box, counter and counter press, but we're doing it all from a mid block from that sort of scenario there. So we're not overexposing ourselves when we do counter press, we're still remaining pretty, pretty solid. However, now the big change. The big change is we use that one in conjunction with this next one, which I've called Jose Stinginho. Rolls off the tongue. Dominate. These are for games against your likes of Cremonese or situations in match where you need to push on a little bit more. You can flip between the two. You'll notice there's not a lot of changes in regards to roles. In fact, none. Just duties. So there's a defense duty, switches to a support duty, for example. The big change is in the team instructions. First up, mentality changes to balance because we're going to be a bit more aggressive. The in-possession instructions stay pretty similar other than the tempo goes a bit higher. In transition, again, it's the same, but do remember that the out of possession this time, we're asking the midfield to push on and high press a bit more. So the counter press is going to take effect, probably higher up if we lose the ball higher up. Also, because we're slightly more aggressive, I've dropped in stop crosses as well. If we lose the ball, I could do with them getting over in case the wing backs are too high up. So the centre backs, defensive midfielders, will attempt to stop crosses as well. That, if you like, is my FME version of a Mourinho tactic, the dominate one. It's a little bit more aggressive. Some people might think it's too aggressive in regards to Jose. I think it's okay. I think he does push that way sometimes. And he's probably more known for that sort of version, the away one. But I do like the dominate at home. Now, I use them both in matches. I didn't use the dominate, for example, away to Inter because we just get pulverized. But at home games, we would use it. In certain games, in the bigger teams, I would switch to that one from that one, depending on how the game is going. Also, there's a third tactic. Now, if you look at this game here against Fiorentina, the game was pretty much done at 5-2 after an hour. We absolutely blitzed it, and I had changed to the third version. Cristiante just put the sixth goal in, sorry, the sixth goal after an hour. Now, if I show you the formation, you can see there, that is the away one, amped up a bit we drop Pellegrini into the central midfield zone it still has counter counter press on and if I'm really really gonna grind it down I'll take counter counter press off and I'll switch that to probably regroup as well so that's just to seal games down and let's be honest Jose is not scared of just locking games down right they have it three versions of Jose that I've done the one dominating the one standard that he uses mostly and we want to properly lock teams down just like that we brought this one in after the second go round for fm 
I think it's perfect. If you want to be completely hosé, use the second one, but you do need to adapt it. What a beautiful tactic. As you can see from the average ratings, the squad all performed pretty, pretty consistently in the sevens, some in the high sevens average rating, which is pretty elite. Pellegrini, for example, 30 assists and 16 goals from his appearances. If you lock him down with set pieces, you can see corners 18, crossing 17, free kick 16. You can lock him down alongside the Stinger TMS collection, which you'll find in the TMS Discord. You'll get the benefits from that big time. Along with my personal favourite, the short free kick routine, it's going to give you some good results. Now, as with all recreations, this is not the optimal game-breaking way to play, but if you're looking to try and emulate one of your managerial heroes, take aspects of this, give it a go.